The Dr. Fazzo TV Show is brought to you by POYA, People of Yuma Health Association. The Dr. Fazzo TV Show is intended for health educational purposes only and complies with all the HIPAA regulations. Welcome to the Dr. Fossil Show. This is the June 2020 edition, and we, today we're going to be talking about um, a healthy kidneys. Thank you, Dr. Fossil. Welcome to our show. Uh, thank you, Wendy, for having me in the show today. Uh, so it's an important topic about um, healthy kidneys or how can we keep the kidneys healthy. So we're going to talk about that, and um, let's, let's, uh, let's have a discussion. Okay. For starters, Dr. Fossil, can you tell us where the kidneys are located and what is their primary purpose? So uh, the kidneys are located in the in the mid upper back. Uh, it's actually uh, not in the lower back as most people think they are. Uh, they're deep uh, in the uh, mid upper back, and um, the function of the kidney is not just to make urine, but uh, they have a lot more function, including making blood cells. Uh, they produce certain kind of enzymes or hormones which produce uh, uh, in response to need for blood and they tell the bone marrow to produce more blood. They also make vitamin D as well and they also control the blood pressure in the body. These are the few functions besides making urine and we know that urine is actually a byproduct of uh, cleaning the blood from waste products and uh, extra fluid. So is a very important role the kidneys have in our body. Thank you, Dr. Fazel. And how can we keep our kidneys healthy? There are a few things we can do to keep the kidneys healthy. Uh, it's uh, mostly, uh, besides you, you know, like other medical conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol, that need to be controlled because they can affect any part of the body, including kidneys. Uh, if we have that under control, then uh, other things uh, like, for example, uh, uh, the, the diet what we eat and the fluid what we drink and uh, certain kind of medications which need to be avoided can uh, keep the kidneys going for a long time. So the healthy diet would be uh, a low protein diet. Uh, I will call to eat less meat and less beans because those are the foods which are high in protein and drinking at least a little and a half of water every day. Uh, again, that is a generalization because uh, it depends on which uh, environment we live in and uh, what other medical condition we have. But if you uh, live in a, a, a normal environment and we do not have any other medical conditions like heart failure, liver failure, or kidney failure, then a minimum one and a half liter of fluids, then includes all the fluids, coffee, juice, uh, water uh, is required to keep the kidney uh, doing their job, you know. Is water best for us, Dr. Fossil, or can we include other liquids in our diet, such as soda or water or tea? Um, water would be the most purest liquid to drink for the kidneys, um, but other fluids also does count to keep the kidneys going. Uh, soda is not the best drink to have to protect kidneys because soda have actually certain chemicals inside which can cause actually more damage to the body. Uh, for example, phosphorus and black sodas and acid in the soda by itself can cause acidity, which can cause extra burden on the kidneys to perform their function. So I uh, would not recommend drinking excess of soda uh, in patients which have kidney problems. So water would be a better choice. And is, it, is there such a thing as drinking too much water? Yes. So if you, if you have a totally normal kidneys, uh, the kidneys can handle quite a bit of uh, water intake. Uh, but uh, there's the limitations. And we have seen certain uh, patients who drink so much water that they flush out all the electrolytes. And we call it uh, psychogenic polydipsia. That means they are psychologically addicted to drinking water. And it can cause its own uh, harms as well. For example, low sodium in the in the in the blood. Um, if you have underlying medical conditions, for example, heart failure, liver failure, or uh, kidney failure, 
more drinking of fluid than what the kidney can handle can cause fluid retention. And the way you can tell that you have fluid retention is by uh, weighing yourself every day and if you are gaining weight rapidly or if your legs are getting swollen or you're getting short of breath, that means you are retaining too much water. So that definitely you can overdo a water in intake uh, more than the, the, what the kidney can handle. Thank you. Dr. Faza, what, food, what foods are good for our kidney health and are there any foods that we should avoid? The one thing kidneys hate is the protein. Uh, kidneys have to uh, metabolize the protein and uh, get rid of uh, byproducts of protein. So protein is, uh, in the normal amount might be okay, but if you take extra protein, a lot of protein, a lot of uh, extra protein uh, supplements or meat every day, kidneys does not like that. So low protein diet is better for the kidney. Uh, there are also certain things which we need to be vigilant for. For example, certain foods are high in potassium and phosphorus. And kidneys, uh, if they're weak, they can, uh, the body can retain phosphorus and potassium in the blood, and that can cause uh, uh, a lot of symptoms. For example, high potassium can cause uh, heart to stop. Uh, high phosphorus can cause uh, skin uh, disorders, bone disorders, and itching in the skin. So we, uh, we generally recommend people who are, have a kidney problem that they should eat less uh, protein and uh, food which are high in potassium and uh, phosphorus, they should avoid that. Thank you, Dr. Fazel. Dr. Fazel, what foods are high in potassium? So Wendy, that's a good question. The food which are high in potassium are uh, uh, quite a few, but uh, the most common ones are bananas, oranges, potatoes, tomatoes, and um, even grapefruit. So uh, we have found that cactus is also pretty high in, in uh, potassium. In certain uh, cultures, like in Hispanic cultures, uh, cactus is used as a, a regular uh, food supplement or food uh, as a food. And uh, if they have a kidney problem, they should definitely be avoided because cactus is very high in potassium. Dr. Fossil, are you open to some questions from the audience? Uh, definitely, Wendy. Let's open up the panel today for a question from the audience. Let's uh, see if our audience have any questions about the kidney disorder today. Dr. Faza, we have a question here from Peter in the audience, and he would like to know if there's any vitamins or dietary supplements that he should be taking that are better for his kidneys. So that's a very good question, uh, Peter. Uh, Generally speaking, uh, when people have kidney problems, they get low on vitamin D. So we do recommend vitamin D intake and we actually write the prescriptions so they can take over the counter vitamin D. But we have to check it before they start to do that. Uh, but if they have to replace a vitamin, that's going to be vitamin D because vitamin D is, is made by the kidney. And when the kidneys are not working 100%, uh, it can get low in the body and the vitamin D supplement might, might be required. We have a very interesting question, Dr. Fossil, from Julia in the audience. She would like to know, what is kidney X? Well, I'm glad somebody asked that question. Uh, Julia, the um, kidney X is actually uh, a new task force. It's a joint venture or joint effort between uh, different organizations to make a uh, um, replacement for the uh, damaged kidney. So now we know that at this point we have only, um, uh, if your kidneys are not working and, um, or the kidney function is less than 15%, either either have a kidney transplant from a living donor or, or catabolic donor or you go on dialysis. Uh, but kidney X uh, efforts are is to make an artificial kidney. And what they're doing is that they're doing a competition between different organizations or personnel or scientists that whosoever come up with that uh, a model of a kidney which can be which is artificial kidney and, and, and can be play in place inside the human body and then that thus uh, re uh, re replacing the need to have uh, dialysis uh, they get prices this is a motivational factor as well as uh, a joint effort to uh, help the people who are on dialysis they can have the healthy life without needing uh, need for dialysis or transplant. 
That's very interesting, Dr. Fossil. So it would actually decrease the mortality of people with kidney diseases. As a matter of fact, with kidney X, the goal is that they can have just a normal life. So they're making kidney X through 3D printers. They're making, uh, you know, using uh, different biotechnologies, uh, just like they have done artificial heart to make an artificial kidney, which will perform just like a normal kidney, and it will be inside your body, and you can do whatever you need to do as you would do if you have a normal kidneys. Very interesting, Dr. Fazel, thank you so much. And Dr. Fazel, we have one last question here. This one is from Roger in the audience. He would like to know, has there been an impact or any changes in kidney donors during the COVID-19 pandemic? It's a very good question, Wendy. Uh, and uh, Roger, but what happened is that we have uh, seen in some studies that uh, the donor pool of kidneys have actually decreased with the COVID-19 infection. And the reason is that uh, less people are probably dying with COVID-19, uh, less people are dying from non-COVID related uh, causes uh, because they are not traveling as much or doing certain activities which, call, which will cause mortality. So the donor pool have actually have gone smaller. So that means your waiting time on transplant has gone longer. Thank you for joining us for the Dr. Fossil Show. Join us next month for another edition of the Dr. Fossil Show for the July 2020 edition. Thank you so much, Dr. Fossil, for taking this time with us and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Wendy for having me today. Thank you so much audience for being with us today and uh, God bless us all and God bless America.